Good day, students. Welcome to part three of the Geometry Regions uh, Review for January 2014. In this installment, we're going to be going over problems 11 to 15. All right, let's take a look at uh, question number 11. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> so 11 says, in the diagram below of quadrilateral A, B, C, D, E and F are points on A, B, and CD, as you can see, respectively. Um, segment BE is congruent to segment DF, and segment AE is congruent to segment CF. Which conclusion can be proven? Um, all right, so this is a problem where we can uh, practice our proof writing skills. So what I'm going to do before I start um, drawing some kind of conclusion is Annotate my diagram using this given information right here. So B is congruent to DF. B, E, and DF are congruent. So this segment is congruent to this segment. AE is congruent to CF. So AE is congruent to CF. So just by inspection, what can you conclude? Well, you can conclude that this entire length, AB, is congruent to this entire length, CD, right there. So number two looks like the apparent answer. All right, so just by inspection, we can see that that's, that's the uh, answer. Uh, let me give you an example. So for instance, if this were 3 and 2, what would that mean? It would mean that this side, CF, is going to be 2, and DF will be 3, and then the, both sides will be 5. All right, let me show you the proof um, that, that, that the answer is actually um, option 2. You don't have to write the proof by any means, but I just want you to practice, all right? So, uh, statements and reasons. <clears throat> Let's see what we can do here. Um, so, I'm, I'm going to have to do some addition here, some um, algebra, I mean some arithmetic on the side segment, so I need to do with the actual lengths. Um, so, first thing we're going to do is make a statement connecting the length of each segment with um, the statements provided up here. So if segment BE is congruent to segment DF, what can we say? We can say that the length of segment BE is equal to the length of DF. All right, and this is by definition of congruent, seg congruent segments. Definition of congruent, congruent um, segments. Okay. What else can we say? Um, we can also say that uh, AE, segment AE, is equal to segment CF. We got that from this statement and by definition of congruent segments also. Congruent segments. Now that we have this statement, um, what we can do is we can use the segment addition postulate to add the left and the right sides of these two equations. So if we add the left side, uh, we'll have BE uh, plus AE, and on the right side is equal to DF plus CF. All right? And what's the reason um, <clears throat> for that? Let me move this down a little bit. Um, the reason for this is we are basically using the um, addition property of equality, okay? So, <clears throat> addition <clears throat> property of equality, all right? Okay, now what can we do? BE and AE together forms AB, okay? So, we have AB is equal to df and cf together form cd okay what's the reason for that this is the segment addition postulate okay segment addition postulate all right we're almost there and then what can we say to conclude our proof um <clears throat> using the um Definition of congruency, we can now simply state that since AB, the length of AB is equal to CD, then um, segment AB 
is congruent to segment CD. And this is by definition of congruent segments. Congruent segments. All right, so that clearly shows that um, our answer is option two. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, let's take a look at problem 12. It says in the diagram below, four pairs of triangles are shown. Um, congruent corresponding parts are labeled in each pair. Using only the information given in the diagrams, which pair of triangles cannot be proven congruent? All right, so, um, <clears throat> so what are the um, uh, congruency postulates that we have? What can we use? What can we use to conclude that two triangles um, are congruent? Okay, so let's go over it. Um, what can be used? Um, we have the angle side angle ASA can be used, and then we also have SAS. Just think about switching, inverting the A and the S as you have that, and then you also have angle angle side. Angle, angle, side, or side, angle, angle. It doesn't really matter the order. All right? And then you have SSS. So these are the <coughs> um, congruency postulates that can work, okay? That can be used. Um, so um, can be used. And then what cannot be used? So what cannot be used? <coughs> Um, you cannot use AAA, -A, for example, you can't use that. You cannot use SSA or um, ASS, okay? You cannot use any of these. So let's look at these triangles, look at what we have and see which one violates um, these ideas right here, okay? So for A, what do we have? We have two congruent sides, that's an S. So we have S, and then we have, this is another side, and this right here is an angle. So we have, whichever way you want to view it, you can view this as SSA, or ASS going the other direction. So what did we talk about SSA or ASS? We say that it cannot be used. Oh, and another one too, that can be used is AHL, hypotenuse leg. And this is for only right triangles, okay? Forgot to mention that. All right, now um, SSA is a fail. So this is the answer right here. This cannot be used. Remember, it says cannot. This cannot be used to show that two triangles are congruent. So let's just look at the other ones um, just to make sure. This is angle, angle, side. A, A, S. Or you can think about it as SAA, it doesn't matter. So going this direction is SAA. That's good. This right here is A, S, A. Angle, this angle is congruent to that angle. This side is congruent to this side, S. This angle is congruent to this angle, A. ASA is what? ASA is good. ASA can be used to shoot, to prove congruency. And then this one right here, we have, you have to be careful, this is a right triangle. Okay, but anytime you see right triangle, think about HL. Do we have hypotenuse? Yes, we have hypotenuse. Do we have a leg that is congruent? Yes, we have a leg that's congruent. So by the HL theorem, this is also good. So our answer is clearly option letter A. All right, let's take a look at problem 13. Um, there's a lot that can be concluded here. It says um, in triangle ABC, shown below, L is the midpoint of BC, M is the midpoint of AB, and N is the midpoint of AC. If MN is 8, ML is 5, NL is 6, the perimeter of trapezoid B, M, N, C is, so we're looking for this perimeter right here, B, M, N, C, this trapezoid right here. That's what we're looking for the area of. Um, so let me highlight what we're trying to find so we don't get confused. <clears throat> what is trapezoid BMNC? Let's make it blue. So we're going to go from here. Let's, e. Let's do that again. 
So we have B, M, N, C. Okay? So we're trying to find the perimeter of this trapezoid. Now, when you have a situation where you have a midpoint, um, there's a lot that goes on. But just to cut long story short, um, this side, <coughs> MN is 8, uh, ML is 5, and NL is 5. No, NL is 6, NL is 6, and MN is 5. Okay. All right, so with this information, this side is, is parallel to this side, and guess what? This side, this segment right here is congruent to this segment and this segment. Another pair of congruency we have, this segment right here is congruent to this segment right here. And lastly, this segment right here is parallel and congruent to this segment right here. Okay? So that's always what happens when you have um, a triangle connecting the three medians of, of a triangle. All right? So if this is 8, guess what? This side is 8 and this side is 8. If this is 5, you see the side that 5 is parallel to? See, this is parallel to that right there. This is 5 also. All right? And then this side 6, you see the side it's parallel to? That is also 6, likewise. So we now have the measures of our trapezoid. So the perimeter, the perimeter of our trapezoid perimeter, uh, is going to be simply 8 plus 8 plus 8. This, these two parallel sides, 8 plus 8 plus 8, plus 6, this side right here, plus 5. Okay? You have 24 plus 11. Final answer is 35. Option number 1. All right, let's take a look at um, problem number 14. It says in the, in the diagram below, um, line R, C, B, T, and triangle A, B, C are shown with measure A equals 60 and measure A, B, T equals 125. What is the measure of triangle A, C, R? So what is this triangle? What is the measure of this triangle right here? All right, I'm going to show you the long way of doing it, and then I'll tell you a shortcut, okay? So this is a long way. First thing you want to do is find this angle. That's step one. And then step two is you find this angle right here. And then since this is a linear pair, step three, you find that angle. Okay? So that's how you want to do it step by step. So this is one, step number two, and then step three, your final answer is measure of angle ACR. Okay? So first thing you want to find, let's find ABC. What's the measure of ABC? ABC is a linear pair with 125. So measure of angle ABC is equal to 180 minus 125. Okay? So that's going to give us 55 degrees. Now, as soon as you find an answer, please put it in your shape. Okay? So 55, it looks better that way so you can keep track of what you're doing. Now, we're shifting to step two. We're looking for ACB. Measure of angle ACB. We have um, a triangle. The sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Remember the formula number of sides minus 2 times 180 tells you the sum of the interior angles. This has three sides minus 2 times 180 is 1 times 180, which is 180. Or the triangle angle sum theorem, you can use that also. The me measure of ACB is 180 minus the sum of the other two because they all add up to 180. So if I subtract 180 from the sum of these two, I'll get the last one. Okay, so 60 plus 55. Add those together, 180 minus um, 115 equals uh, 65. All right, is that our final answer? No, we still have one more step to go. Measure of angle uh, ACR. That's what we are asked to find. Measure of angle ACR um, is, is a linear pair with this angle right here, ACB. So it's going to be 180 minus 65. 
because of the linear pair postulate, we know that sum of angles on a straight line is 180 degrees. Okay, so we subtract these two, we get 115. And that's our final answer right here, option number two. All right, the shortcut I wanted to tell you is that the sum of interior angles of a triangle is always equal to the exterior angle. Okay, so when we found this as 55, if I added these two together, I can jump straight to the final answer, 115. I could have done that. That would be that's perfectly fine. Okay, so that was just another shortcut that that you can use. All right, let's move on to the last problem in this installment. All right, it says which equation represents circle O shown in the graph below. So, what is the equation of a circle centered around H K, which radius R? So, the center is hk and radius is r the equation of the circle as a locus of all points r units from hk all right so find the distance from there you're going to have x minus h square plus y minus k square equals r square all right so just like the pythagorean theorem anyway let's apply it to this problem what is it what are the coordinates of, of the center? This is negative 2 and 0. So the coordinates of, this, of, the, um, of point O, the center, is as follows. So the center is, um, for x is 0, for y is negative 2. All right? And your radius is, you count from the center to the extremity counting from here all the way to there. How many units is that? Uh, let's count it. One, two, three, four, five, five. All right, so the equation of a circle requires you to know just the center and the radius. Why? Because the center tells you H and K, and then the radius tells you R. Now let's plug in these values into our equation. Okay, so to plug into our equation, we're gonna have x minus 0 square plus y what? y minus negative 2 square equals, uh, what do we put here? 5 square. One mistake most people make is they double it. You don't double it, you square it. If you double it, you get this answer, one of these answers, which is wrong. All right, so if we simplify this, we have x square plus y plus 2 square equals 5 square, which is 25. All right, so we can clearly see that our answer is option number 4. All right, so that's that. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to the rest of this review series and other cool clips. And post a comment to let us know what you think about this presentation. More clips can be found on markgoodserve.com slash test prep. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.